We generally think of mixing as a one-way process. Once I mix milk with my tea, I can't get the milk back to how it was before. When I add food colouring to water, I can't get the food colouring out again. This is due to the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy must always increase. We can think of entropy a little bit like chaos or disorder, and the universe will always evolve to a more chaotic state. So, food dye fix mixed with water and milk mixed with tea is more disordered than the two things being separate. But it turns out I can challenge the second law of thermodynamics with this little contraption here. I have a 3D printed handle inside a glass beaker and I'm going to add some glycerin. Now just like I did with the blue food colouring before, I'm going to add some drops of food dye. Then I'm going to mix the colours up by turning the handle six times clockwise. Now I'm going to turn the handle back six times counterclockwise. Colours have gone back to basically how they were before. We seem to un have unmixed them and broken the second law of thermodynamics. To understand what's going on, we have to understand the different ways that fluids can move. There are two ways that fluids inside a closed system can flow, through turbulent flow and through laminar flow. We can see both when I drop food dye in water. At first, the colours stream down in straight, predictable paths. This is laminar flow. But then they suddenly start to twist and turn chaotically. This is turbulent flow. Turbulent flow is a kind of chaotic motion. As soon as the particles of dye begin to move turbulently, they could end up anywhere. But laminar flow is interesting too. When a liquid flows like this, we can model it as if it's a set of sheets stacked upon each other. So I can model it with this deck of cards. I can slide the liquid across. And the cards never mix with each other in this direction. And it turns out that if I slide the liquid back, it goes back to how it was before. And this is a little bit like the liquids in the beaker. When I turn the handle, liquids at different points away from the center of the beaker were moving with different angular velocities. The layers of the liquid slide around each other like playing cards stretching out in a spiral. So it turns out that the colours never actually mix up. It just looks like they do from the front. When we wind the handle back the other way, we slide the layers back to how they were before. So, in this device, the food colouring wasn't actually getting mixed up. It just looked like it was. And we can see this a little bit more clearly if we look at the liquids from above. Oh, hello. <laughs> So it turns out some liquids will move in laminar flow and some in turbulent flow. And it depends on a couple of conditions and those conditions are given by something called the Reynolds number. Now the Reynolds number has a lot of different variables in it. Those variables stand for the diameter of the system that the liquid's flowing through, the liquid's flow rate, the cross-sectional area, and the kinematic viscosity. Viscosity is how rapidly a liquid reacts to deformation. And this is actually a huge factor in whether or not liquids move via turbulent flow or laminar flow. And this has a huge effect on whether or not they'll work in our unmixer. So let's have a look at some different liquids with different viscosities in our unmixer to see which ones work. We can try our unmixing experiment with these different liquids. We can see that the more viscous liquids do experience laminar flow after all, and we're able to unmix them to varying degrees. The less viscous liquids, like the water and glycerol mix, they experience turbulent flow and the food dye becomes uniformly mixed throughout the liquid much more quickly. So when liquids move turbulently, diffusion occurs a lot faster. 
Diffusion is the type of mixing we're most used to and it occurs when the individual molecules of two substances mix up. If we left our food dye sitting in the glycerin for long enough, diffusion would take over and the colours would gradually mix uniformly throughout the liquid. And again, that's because of entropy. I mentioned entropy at the beginning, and the second law of thermodynamics which states that the total amount of entropy within a system must always increase. To understand why our unmixer doesn't break this law, we have to learn a little bit more about entropy. So entropy, S in this equation, is defined to be the number of microscopic configurations that a system can take, which lead to one certain macroscopic outcome. So this is shown through the concept of multiplicity, which is given by the symbol omega. Systems with a higher multiplicity mean that there are a lot more ways that you can arrange the individ individual molecules within them to reach a certain outcome. So for example, if I were to roll a pair of dice, I am much more likely to roll a 7 than a 2, because there are 6 different ways that I can add the numbers on these dice to 7, but only one way that I can add them to 2. So rolling 7, we say, has a higher multiplicity than rolling 2. And this would lead to it having a higher entropy. Now for molecules of food dye diffusing in a glass of water, it turns out that there are more ways to arrange the individual molecules of dye for mixed up colours than there are for unmixed colours. The second law of thermodynamics states that systems will always evolve to the state with the greatest entropy and the greatest multiplicity. Richard Feynman said that it is a change from an ordered arrangement to a disordered arrangement which is the source of irreversibility. In our laminar flow, we never actually go from a disordered state to a more ordered one. Our mixed up state is just as ordered as our unmixed one, just in a different way, and they both have low multiplicities, and overall the entropy does increase. But something else to consider is that I'm a part of the system too. When I turn the handle, I'm interacting. The energy to turn the handle comes from me metabolizing food and turning it into energy in my body. And my entropy is increasing. So the total system here of me plus beaker plus glycerin plus food dye, that total entropy is increasing. So the second law of thermodynamics does hold. So it's only because of laminar flow that we seem to get these liquids unmixing. And the reason is, because they were never really mixed up in the first place. If we were to leave the system for long enough, that food dye would eventually mix uniformly throughout the beaker, and the system would increase to the state of greatest multiplicity, just as the second law of thermodynamics says.